What's going on guys? David here from Waves Audio. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to achieve harder, punchier drums and percussive elements in your tracks using the Smack Attack Transient Shaper. Let me add some more smack to that. See, right off the bat, you can quickly get your drums snappier and crispier. You can add more impact and boom, or you can duck it back. If you're looking for more punch and more slap on your drums and sounds, the Smack Attack Transient Shaper allows you to custom design that perfect pulse. Transient processors work best on sounds with high transients. Things like drum hits, certain samples, loops, synth hits, arpeggios. We can even increase attack on our pianos. Okay, now bypass. Let's kick it back in. We can blend the signal with a wet dry mix control. Let's go ahead and use it to soften the plug on our acoustic guitar sample. Let's bypass it. And back on. Now what exactly is a transient? Let me show you on this kick sample here. Now a transient is that onset impulse in a sound. It represents that quick spike or attack in a waveform's volume. Smack Attack gives you the power to control the attack point and the sustain it leaves behind. All in real time and zero latency. Total control on attack and sustain levels. But with Smack Attack, you can also control the duration and the shape, which means you can get really creative with it. We can open Smack Attack in a few ways. I can open it in Studio Racks as part of my plugin chain. It's under the Dynamic section. Or, I can just drag it from my VST plugin pane, just like that. Now let me show you some more of what Smack Attack can do. I'm gonna solo my snare to show you guys how the plugin's attack and sustain controls work to shape up transients. I'm gonna start by tweaking the attack knob to show you Smack Attack in action. By boosting the attack just a little, we can already hear how our snare is cutting right through. Be sure to pay attention to your output levels. By boosting the attack, we're also increasing the snare's volume. You can bring the snare volume to optimal levels by using the output knob here. Let's head up to our attack sensitivity control. Now this is how we set the threshold range for the attack's processing. Let's open up the sensitivity to about 60%, which is a good starting point. Now on the flip side, we can bring down our attack to reduce that initial onset hit of the snare. Let's hide it back like this. Now Smack Attack's attack control also has three different shaping options. You got your needle shape, your nail, and your blunt shape. Each has a unique way of lighting up or chilling out your sound. Let me show you now how each attack shape sounds. Needle gives your transients a really sharp rise and fall. I'm gonna turn up my duration control here to make the change dramatic enough for you to hear and see what's going on in the graphic wave display. See that? With the duration, all you gotta remember is shorter equals spiky, wider equals warmer. All right, next we have the nail shape. The nail is similar to the needle, except with a slower, little longer tail end. Check this out. Now we also have a blunt shape. It makes the initial hit softer because the shape has a slower rise than the needle or the nail. Again, just be sure you're paying attention to your volume meters. Make sure you're not clipping or distorting, unless you want that. It all depends on what shape you're using and on what particular sound. Sometimes you can get some really crazy results. Now if it's that distorted or overdriven sound you're looking for, Smack Attack can handle that too. Stick around, I'll show you how to handle that effect later on. So that's our attack control. Let's go ahead and take a look at our other main control, the sustain. Now the sustain controls our transients and tail, or the way the sound finishes off. Let me show you what the sustain control can do on this clap I have soloed here. Now just like the attack, the sustain has three shapes. Linear, nonlinear, 
and soft linear. Linear means the sustain will decay evenly until the end. The nonlinear shape can give us either a fast or a gentle curve at the end. The third shape is soft linear. This shape softens our transient's peaks and increases the end length. Nice, huh? So it sounds pretty cool. But I found the soft linear shape works best on things that are not drums. Let's hear it in action on our synth arpeggio. Let me go ahead and solo that for you. Now you can go as surgical or as extreme with smack attack as you want. Let's get dirty and distorted on this drum loop here. Now you can go subtle with it or you can just blow it out. That's what I'm talking about. We can even tame the sound and keep it under control without losing all that boominess and that push. The clipper here works as sort of a saturator. It maintains that sound without going over zero dB. Your limiter here is gonna squash that sound with a fast limiter. The trick is to balance this out with the output level to get that sweet spot. Either way, Smack Attack Transient Shaper definitely helps deliver that punch, letting you elevate your beats and sounds to the next level. There you go, guys, the Smack Attack Transient Shaper from Waves. Once you check this one out and start shaping and fitting your drums, sounds, and mixes, you're gonna find an endless world of possibilities. If you're new to transients or shaping transients or envelopes, don't hesitate to dive in and try it. This tutorial showed you how Smack Attack is super easy to use, but creates a great difference, and you don't need to be a pro to use it. Check out the link in the description for a free demo of the Smack Attack Transient Shaper. Feel free to leave questions in the comments or visit waves.com to learn more. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.